Yeah. I hear it working. I hear it working. <laughs> I hear it working. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome everybody out to church this evening. Yeah. It's a nice pretty day out there. Beautiful. It is. Um, but you care to have us up in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord, to thank you for this beautiful day you give us to enjoy. And thank you, we're able to be back in your house with our church family. Thank you for each one that's able to be out this evening. And pray for those that can't be, Lord. And pray for our missionaries and pray for all those on our prayer list, Lord. You grant them their needs soon. And pray for our church, Lord, that you keep growing so that people saved. And keep blessing the pastor and his family in his ministry. Pray you'll see many souls saved for his labor. Forgive me where I feel, Lord. And help me to be what you'd have us to be. Strength me in the faith. Help me to be a bit blessing to people. Be a soul winner. Watch all of us here this evening. Give us travel mercies when we leave. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You got a prayer request? Remember me. We're still trying to figure out what's going on. They put a heart monitor on me today. So they have done all the other tests came back fine. If they don't find out something, they're going to have to do something else. Yeah. Because uh, I'm afraid to even drive right now. Mm -hmm. Cody's been driving me around. And sometimes that's scarier than me driving. <laughs> <laughs> I put they put that heart monitor on me, and I told Cody, I said, you probably done blowed it up. <laughs> keep, her, keep her in your prayers. She she has to go to a heart, heart doctor, my heart doctor. Thank <laughs> Jerry. So keep her in your prayers too. She's not um, got everything situated yet. She's feeling better every day. But uh, she, she's uh, anyone who hasn't had problems, but I don't think, hopefully, she's not going to have no terrible problems like I did. She's going to a good doctor. She's going to our doctor. Man. Her and Shell, because they both got to go. And I was so tickled about that because he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's been with Ray for 20 some years. And remember this one. For some reason, he's had an allergic reaction to something, and his face is all been broke out, his back. They gave him steroids and told him to take Claritin and Benadryl. But just remembering, because we have no idea what it, what it is, mm -hmm. and we don't have a clue where to even start. Here. Here. You don't remember uh, Sarah, Briar, Macy, and Mom, or in Ravenswood tonight. Briar and them was playing a game, so they got to travel back after that and stuff. So remember them, keep them safe. I got another phone call today. I'll probably have it. My job decision will probably be up at the end of the week. <laughs> what to do and everything. So, or if maybe whatever way it's supposed to go. They, they're supposed to call. So. And there was a baby on the internet. I posted it on our church thing. From what I know, he fell in a pond. Mm -hmm. I don't have no other details other than that, and the mother is just urgently been asking for a request for him. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the baby was. The last I heard wasn't doing real well, so. The baby's dad for several years. It's, uh, yeah, it, good solid dude. I hate, uh, I hate it for anybody, but especially for somebody that you know, somebody that's close to. So yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. pray for Tim and the kid passed away. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Sorry. Yeah. Definitely pray for that mom and dad then. It'll be a tough situation there. It seems like the, on Facebook there's been a lot of people, like my nephew, he, his girlfriend had posted about the 20 year old who's had the, the heart thing that busted his heart. And yeah. He's 20 years old. 
Oh my God. And then I saw that you shared that. Yeah, and then the, he used to be a mayor at Clay. They found him on the steps dead. Mm. Yeah. Dead. So, I mean, it's just, it's just been a lot here lately. And mm. it always breaks my heart. I mean, it, and especially a kid. Yeah. That really tears me up. Continue to remember Linda Foster. Uh, she's in respiratory failure. Remember Bible school coming up. Anything goes wrong with it. Mary Ann spoke. Let's all go to prayer and we'll just teach one leader in prayer now. Dear Father, we pray for the grace once again tonight. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to go to your house everything you do for us here at the church and in our lives and things dear Lord that it's great to bless each one that's represented here tonight dear Lord that you can just uh, give them what they need tonight dear Lord wherever it may be through now uh, whatever they have in the church tonight dear Lord that's great to be with each one of them and pray that uh, you know that if uh, somebody doesn't uh, he's a right with you dear Lord that they would uh, accept you tonight dear Lord that's all through with me I pray that you each one of those uh, 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 people that got that uh, this Sunday, dear Lord, that you just uh, uh, still hold the place and hold in your arm, dear Lord, that you can just uh, keep the devil off of them, dear Lord, I pray that we can pray out of here, just uh, uh, shove out of this church, dear Lord, I pray that we can be in Bible school and uh, everything leading up to different conversations and things, dear Lord, just pray that uh, uh, you can give me the right things to say and do, just, uh, that you can guide and lead them in that way, dear Lord, I pray that uh, each one of these prayer requests that are spoken tonight, dear Lord, you know that. That little baby uh, that you call home, dear Lord, that stands out tonight. Uh, Floss here tonight, dear Lord, and we think about that mom and dad still in the class. I pray that you get that little family, dear Lord, that you just uh, really need a little extra stomach and hold them up tight. Lord, it's uh, everything that we want to do. I pray that you get a praise. And as we think about it, we say, what do you want? We need to do the guy in the right way. Lord, that you could be able to see it that way. And that's where it's supposed to be. And that's where it's supposed to be. And that's where it's supposed to be. I thank you for everything to do with Mike and I as he uh, leads the Bible study and things, dear Lord, and we take the kids back to prison to be with that, dear Lord, that we could just uh, uh, teach each adult and children and child something here tonight, dear Lord, and pray and ask always in Jesus' name. Amen. Preacher, I forgot. My daughter is getting ready to go on vacation. Remember her, them at prayer, because they're going to be flying. I forget where they're going, somewhere for all. Florida. Florida. But they're going to be flying. She's going to be going for a week. I don't be long. But remember her, because they have to fly. So I, no. I've never got on a plane. I'm scared. Yeah, uh, we, I was going to make an announcement. We're supposed to have a Bible school meeting tonight. And we're going to lay that over to Sunday. Just uh, Stephanie wasn't able to be here. She had some stuff together. and So uh, we just uh, we'll probably try that uh, probably Sunday evening, I guess. What do y'all think? Sunday evening on a Bible school meeting. I may not be here, but y'all just go ahead because I'll, I'll do whatever. Whatever I need to be done, I'll do what I can. Okay. I'm supposed to see my, my little princess. <laughs> you had that thing Monday night, didn't you? And we forgot about it. Yeah, games. We did. Well, I, w I was in Somersville. My grandson took me to Somersville. I was in Somersville trying to get a car. I still haven't got a car. But they're working on that now, or about to, because they, when they get the parts, they'll work on it. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as I thought I was afraid of. And another thing, nursing home visit. Before I forget that, we're going to skip it this month and go back in June. We tried to look at other dates, but there was already somebody else going, so we'll just, uh, I talked to Big J today, and we're just going to go in June. Thought on that in case she's playing on them.
So will we have, um, we're going to have Mother's Day breakfast on that Sunday. And that would have been the second, I mean, that's the second Sunday. Will we have service that night? I mean, I, I'm assuming that we will, but I don't know. No, the Bible school meeting be May 5th. May 5th. May 5th? Yeah, I believe it is May um, I guess uh, just up to everybody. Well, I don't know where everybody. Huh? May 5th is Monday? Sunday. Sunday. This, this coming Sunday will do the VBS meeting. Okay. And uh, I don't know, everybody just to thank on that and make your mind up about May 12th. Uh, May 12th, Sunday evening service, Mother's Day, Sunday evening service. I don't know what if everybody's got planned or. I know we won't we won't be able to make it because that's the day of Journey's dance recital. In Cameron's. In Cameron's. Uh, we usually don't have service on that second Sunday, so. But everybody think on it. We'll we'll decide. Yep. Good. All right. Uh, let's, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. We'll take the kids. Pastor, I'll try to remember to bring a list for people to sign up on what they're going to bring for the Mother's Day breakfast. Yeah. So we'll have plenty of food. Can't tell by my shirt, but uh, I think you, I think you might know where we're at. <laughs> Last chapter of Revelation. We finally made it. We haven't finished it yet. We haven't finished it yet, but hey, we're we're getting there. <clears throat> oh, really. So we're. Uh, Back in 21, uh, with the uh, new heaven and the new earth, God's going to make all things new. And like I said, uh, verse 4 back there says, And God will wipe away every tear from her eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. And there shall be no more pain for the former things that passed away. And he says in 5, he says, And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. All things new. And he said to me, Right, for these things are true and faithful. And what a... What a, a, a an amazing thing to look forward to. I mean, I I can't wait. You know, I mean, it just you know you think of the things of, of this world and nothing satisfies. It really doesn't. Can you hear me all right, Bubby? Okay. Yeah, you know. All right, man. <laughs> but uh, we'll get ahead to uh, chapter twenty-two and uh, read it. And, uh, Bobby, go ahead. If uh, you want to read, read. If not, just pass it along. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Chapter 22, verse 1. Yes, sir. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the land. Number 2, in the midst of the street. And the other side of the river was there in the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. Three. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Four. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. 
5. And there shall be no more night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. 6. And he said unto me, This saying are faithful and true, and the Lord God are holy prophets sent his angel to show up unto his servant the things that must sh shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that is of the saying of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book of God. Verse 10, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, the time is at hand. 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Yeah. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and then the first and the last. 14. Blessed are those who do not uh, do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, sent my, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy... God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. All right. <clears throat> okay, so I, uh, uh, starting in this first verse here, I, I thought there was going to be no more seed. But we see there's a river. And where, where does it flow from? From the throne of God. Yeah, and I, I think we touched on last week about the woman at the well. You know, when Jesus says to her, you know, if you, you know, you, the water that I'm going to give you, you won't thirst anymore. And she wants this water. You know, but this is what he's talking about. You know, this, this, this river of water. And then uh, we go on to verse 2, and we see that in the middle of the, uh, of the street, on either side of the river, there's the tree of life. So we're going back to the garden, right? Yeah. We're going back to where things were right, where we walked with God, where He provided everything, all our needs for us, and all we had to do was just obey Him. And we didn't. So now we're here. But uh, what's this? Uh, the tree yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. What's that about? Continuous blessings in the new Jerusalem. <laughs> Sounds medicinal in some form. Yeah. A reference here. I was going to look at it, but see if that. Nah. That reference. 
reference to the page. 21, 24 of 21. Uh, and the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the king of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. All right. So yeah, there is some kind of healing going on there. You know, so... And uh, in three there, the, the greatest thing, there is no more curse here, you know. Well, and also back in two, remember there was that tribulation period where all the nations were not um, in good situations. So are, are, are they remembered then or in heaven or? Those that, that are saved from them, I think, are. Reference Ezekiel 47 12. Yeah, that's what my reference was, but I read it and I didn't really. Didn't go anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of significance with the, with the numbers that God uses. Was that 47, 12? 12 months of the year. Also, now, I mean, that we think of, back in Ezekiel, it does say, by the river upon the bank thereof, so on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for me, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit therefore work. Thereof be consumed, it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because the waters that issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine. I read the wrong one. Oh, okay. I, I was looking at the wrong chapter when I read that, so yeah, that goes exactly along with it. So if you want to go to Ezekiel 47 12, you want to, you want to read that again? And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side or on that side shall grow all trees for me, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaves thereof for medicine. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of uh, the same kind of picturistic. Uh, thing that we're, we're seeing here in verse 2, you know, in the middle of the street, the water's flowing out of the, out of the throne, out of the sanctuary, and um, you're getting 12 fruits. And like I said, that could be for 12 tribes, 12 disciples, you know, just 12, could be 12 seasons, you know, there's 12 months. So, you know, God is, is uh, perfect in the way He does things. And remember when we started this, you know, that one of the big things that I was saying that God is not random, his, his ways are perfect. You know, so, but yeah, their fruit uh, will be for food and, or meat and their leaves for medicine. And so, God's always providing for us. If you look uh, back into the, you know, the uh, Israelites, how did he provide for them there? Manna. Manna. Quail. Yeah, quail. What else? Guidance. Guidance, yeah. He was a fire by night and a cloud by day. What else? Part of the river, or the river, the Red Sea. Yeah. <laughs> the big river. Yeah. Big river, yeah. The big river, yeah. <laughs> but um, remember when they got bit by snakes? You know, you'd look at, look, you'd at, look at the symbol, that's a healing, you know, so all you have to do is that, you know, and water. He struck the rock and he got water a couple times I think he did. And then once he struck it and once he was supposed to strike it but he, but uh, God told him to speak to the rock and he struck it and God was not happy about that. But he That's get, why he didn't get to go into the land of Canaan. Yeah, so he did get water but yeah so God is providing and I, I think we can see that here in verse uh, 2 that 
you know, he's going to provide all our, our needs. And, you know, um, like I said, if you, if you do go back and just the first verse, the second, and the third, you can almost see a pattern of, like, um, uh, Genesis. If you go back to Genesis and you read, you know, even when there was, you know, like the, the, the Spirit of God was on the face of the deep, you know, the waters, you know, so there's, there's water there. And then he does the garden. He does, you know, all these things to provide everything for Adam and Eve. And then you go into the third one, and then you go to the curse. Okay? So here, the, God's saying that there's no more curse. You know? But back then, it was kind of, if you, if you can kind of see that, you know. You know if you, but it's, it's kind of neat that he begins the Bible like that and he ends it like that. So God is not random. You know, he does things specifically. And guess what? In four, they shall see his face. We'll walk with God again. You know, like it was in the beginning. And his name shall be on their foreheads. What an amazing thing. And there shall be no night there. No need, no lamp. Um, no light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I got a couple uh, references here. Psalms 36 9. See, see what that says. And then in uh, Psalms, what did I say, 36, 9, it says, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. And uh, remember back in Genesis where God said, Let there be light. There was no sun, there was no moon, there was no stars. There was nothing that illuminated light. The only light that was there was what God you know, and that was it. It was just God. So you go back to chapter 21, like in verse 23. Uh huh. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yeah, absolutely. And it says, They shall reign forever and ever. Who's they? I hope everybody can answer this. The believers. Yeah. Us. Us, me. Us, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No more curse. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so uh, then after this, it kind of goes into a conclusion. And uh, like I said, uh, just setting this up, uh, John has this angel that is uh, directing him around and he's showing him all these things, showing him all these visions. And uh, once before, John knelt down and worshiped this angel. And I think it was in uh, chapter 19, verse 10. And he says, I, uh, and I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And this one here in uh, verse nine, he says, and he said, see that you do not do that for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets of and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And so, who, 
whoever this is, he was a prophet. So that's interesting. And then we go to verse 10, and we've seen this before because we went through uh, Daniel. Yeah. And, he's, and he says to, him, uh, to me, do not seal up the words of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And if we go back to Daniel 8, 26, we'll see what the angel tells Daniel. It used to be I'd open the Bible and it'd just go to right to Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> we were in Daniel so much. So, so we were in there very, very long. Let's see. Let's see here. Am I on the right one? 826. No, that's not the right one. It's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of chapter 12 and where is this at? Oh, chapter 12, verse 9. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of the, uh, the, the time of the end. Man, I can't read tonight. Okay, so. So this is okay. So you have that, and then this says that it will not be sealed; that it will be unsealed. So, yeah. what does that tell you? It's the time of the end. It's time of the end. Yeah. Absolutely. Every second, we get closer to Jesus coming back, and that's awesome. Yeah, we are. We are definitely there. Israel is a nation. We are definitely there. <clears throat> this verse 11 is, you know, let's think about it for a little while. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He is righteousness, or righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. What does that mean? I have a, a, a commentary that says, When Christ comes, there will be no more opportunity to him for a man to change his destiny. What he is then, he will be forever. Uh, all right. So basically, unless you change your ways, there's just how you're going to be. What's the old saying? It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. You are what you are. I guess. Yeah. But, yeah. At that point, it's not for us to worry about it. It's already a done deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I I, I think about that. We're just not going to worry about these things. God is just, and I don't think we can clearly understand His justice from our human part right here. You know, we we think of laws and rules and stuff and whatever, but to God's perfect ju justice and judgment is. You know, because I mean, if you think about it, you know, you know, I, and I know we've talked about this before about you know thinking about other people that maybe didn't make it or whatever, and you know, but God is just so just that we would realize that you know they had their chance, you know, and they rejected God. You know, I I I don't know I don't know how that works, but you know I I just know. That you know, I think there's some things that God we just can't understand. You know, we just, we just can't do it. He's just so big and so wonderful, and you know, just so all powerful. You know, He says, "I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last." You know, He's He's everything. Well, I think God has given everybody more than ample times because I know He's dealt with me more than. Me. And he had to, I honestly think that he keeps a deal until the very end. I mean, What's that? What's I that? think he keeps a dealing with you to your very end. Yeah. Because I know in the Bible you know, it says man is appointed a time to live and a time to die, a time to be born and a time to die. Mm -hmm. And I think he just keeps sending you something in your mind, in your heart, 
to try to bring you to him before yeah. you I mean, he, he searches us out, you know, he, he really does, you know, so, I mean. Because, I mean, I see it with my mom. My mom could have died on the operating table. She was on there for 20 hours. And, you know, he got her through that. He got her conscious. He got her mind where she could receive. And he saved her. And then he still gave her time to be a witness, a testimony. Yeah. Before she never come home, but anybody came in there, she could testify to that. Yeah. You know, like I said, God's always working on you. Um, you know, like uh, my dad, yesterday would have been his birthday. And when he got saved, it was on his birthday. And then four days later, he was gone. So, you know, yeah, God, God worked on him. And so, there's never, it's, you know, it's, it's never too late. But I think once that point of time comes, but yeah, when you die, then it's too late. You push it that far. Yeah. And we're saying, none of us know our point in time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that's why it's so important for us to receive that free gift of salvation and want to share it. Yeah. You know? <coughs> we definitely want to that share it with everybody. So. And that's our that's our job. You know, I, I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. You know, that's our job to get out there and spread it. Spread the gospel. And that's what scares me about my family. I mean, I've got, I've got kids that need to be in brought in. I mean, they were saved at one point. Yeah. All of my kids have now been saved at one point, but they're not serving and living for him. And then I have a brother who said he was saved, but I've never seen a change. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen the sin that he done ever quit. And I'm a firm believer that when you set God, that sin has to stop. We're all going to sin, but you can't willfully go out and continue the sin yeah. that you was doing beforehand. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, uh, you know, just like uh, the baptism we had, you know, the public, you know, ad ad admission, you know, of, of being a follower of Christ, you know. You're buried in Christ and you're raised as a new creation. You know, so. And I was, this one right here, she's been. I come into church and I, <laughs> you just see a glow around her. I come through there and look at her, but she was just glowing. Yeah. yeah, praise God. I mean, that was, that was an amazing day. I loved it. And I thought it was a great day. So, yeah. And you know, we want that for everyone. If we've got a, a heart of God, we want to see that on everyone. You know, we, we really do. You know, but, you know, like uh, like I said, you were saying about your family members and stuff, you know, but uh, on your own side of it, and I know on my side of it, when when we were just so, you know, trying to get Dad, you know, just to, because, I mean, we knew it was coming. You know, I mean, he had cancer, and he was, you know, it wasn't long. I mean, he was coming. You know, death was coming. And, I mean, I just... I think, you know, that it made me closer to God. It made me a, a, a yeah. better Christian going through that. You know, I mean, I really, really think it did. I mean, it was a hard, hard time, but to see what God did, I mean, I'm there's, there's no, you know, no way I ever thought that God would, you know, save my dad. And then I, I got to the point where, yeah, He can do it. He can do it. You know, and finally did it. You know, and like I said, I, I, I think going through that hard time, going through that trial, that that helped me a lot. And I have an aunt, and it was just like a month after my mom passed away, she called me and she's like, well, I sure hope she got saved. And it just, it made my blood boil. And I told her, I said, I was there when it happened. I can guarantee you she got saved. Yeah. And I didn't talk to her for a while. And she's just now getting her nerve to come back. I didn't say nothing mean to her. I just was like, I know without a doubt. Yeah. I have no doubt in my heart she got saved. And she's just like, well, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. I don't mm. think we're supposed to judge like that. Mm. If mom says she got saved, 
That's how it should mm -hmm. yeah. be. Now, if they're in a situation like what you said with the other person, yeah, yeah you know, you, you judge. You know, and if they're pro professing that, it's our duty as a Christian, as a brother and a sister, to go to that person and say, hey, yeah. you know, you're, you're saying one thing, you're doing another. Yeah, all in love. Trust me, all in love. Don't be pointing, you know, just talk to them, pray with them. You know, I mean, the worst thing you can do is, you know, hey, I seen you here, and this, and that, and that, you know, mm -hmm. and just a bunch of whatever, so I, drama I, and gossip, you don't want that. Yeah, I'm never one to do that. I pray for them, because we're not to judge, because they always say you got one finger pointing that way, and you got more pointing back at you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, like I said, uh, we'll leave the, the judging of salvation to God. Yeah. You know, and but like I said, with the fruits, we you know you want to see fruits. Yeah. You know, the, the the love and kind of Galatians five twenty two and twenty three. Let's go there. You know, read all that about the fruits. And so, but anyway, <clears throat> fourteen. Uh, blessed are those who do his commandments that. Uh, they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city. Remember his city? Remember the open gates that aren't closed ever? But there's angels that sit on each side of them and they don't let anything bad, anything that's going to defile the, the temple of God to come in. So, you know, we, we can go in, we can eat of the, the tree of life, we can enter the gates of the city, we can dwell with God. It says, but outside are dogs and sorcerers. I'm not, I was kind of not dogs and cats, maybe some snakes, <laughs> spiders, or something like I, that. I think it really means like people of low character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, a snake would still work there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be my thing. I'll, I'll, I'll get a pet snake or something. It's your friend, really. It's really your friend. No. Lynn will not come and visit you. <laughs> No, I don't want I don't want a friend of <laughs> But okay. Uh, sorcerers and sexually immoral uh, and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Mm. Uh, none of those things are going to be able to enter the gates of the city. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Okay, so the spirit and the bride say come. Who's the spirit and who's the bride? We're the bride. Christ is the spirit. And let him who hears say come. And let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. And there we go, we're talking about that, that uh, life-giving water. Okay, so now we move down to 18 and 19. For I testify to anyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Someone explain Revelation 23. It ain't gonna work out good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chapter 23 in Revelation is not gonna be a good place for you. It's a part they'll take out of the book of life. You just got your name in the name. Yeah. So I guess you're gonna they're gonna lose their, their name in the book of life. What else? Anything else? That's it? We're good with that? Well, I think if you try to change God's meaning in this book. I mean, because, you know, because like if he say you shall not, like the snake did in the book, he didn't say you shall not, he said you shall. And I think that would be adding and taking away. Yeah. Because that does change God's meaning to what is written. Now, does this mean for the whole Bible, or does it just mean for Revelation? I don't think it's the whole Bible. The whole Bible. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Which are written in this book. I think it's this book. Not just... When was Revelation written? When was it written? Yes. A while back. A while back. <laughs> <laughs> remember, ago, right? yeah. remember the who, what, where, when, and how. Remember how we studied so that. Now listen, uh, now let me just tell you here. Let, let, me, let me explain this to you first. I, I believe this is for the entire Bible, but we're going to look at it in context. Okay? So when was Revelation wrote? Mine says AD 95. AD 95. Okay. Did we have this book in AD 95? No, because Amazon wasn't around. Then. Amazon was not around. So, and like I said, I'm just... I'm just, I want you to look in things in context here, you know, and like I said, this is a discussion within the confines of this church and believers, okay, so, but, uh, you know, so, if this was written in AD 95, we don't have the canon of the Bible yet, okay, but, God knew it was all there, what's that, God knew it was all there, mm -hmm. yeah, it just wasn't put together yet, right. okay, so, but I, you know, I think it's a twofold meaning here. I think we can go with God saying, you know, the prophecy of this book. And remember what I said, you know, everyone laughed at me because I said the Bible was 26 or 27 percent prophecy. And they were like, how do you know that? You know? And I was just like, well, scholars figured it out. You know, that's, that's about what it is. But there's a lot of prophecy in this book. You know, there, there, there is. And uh, once we get into some other things, uh, whenever we study uh, the Bible, you're going to see how much end times come up throughout the entire Bible. I think we've seen that already. Okay? But I absolutely agree that we do not want to add or take away from the canon of the Bible. You know, you know I, uh, uh, the, the plagues you know, are going to be added to you. I, uh, I have referenced, Mike, also um, about warnings against addition or omissions. It says, see Deuteronomy 4, 2, mm -hmm. 12, 32, yeah. and Proverbs 36. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I understand what you're saying about Context. Yes. And yeah. timing. And, and, and timing. Yeah, like right. I said, that's just the, you know, well, like I said, I totally believe that this is for the entire But because Bible. it goes all the way back to the Old Testament with these warnings. Yeah. Well, I, I believe those old warnings were for the laws. Yeah. Yeah, Deuteronomy is, is yeah. all your laws and stuff like that, which we don't have anymore because we, we're we under the law of grace now. So Christ made a new covenant that... You know, we don't have to keep all them laws. We don't have to do all that. All we have to do is accept Him. It's a free gift of salvation that we can't work for. You know, but yes, you know, I, but I, I think it's it. the same. I think we look at it in the same way as the prophecies from the Old Testament that are fulfilled in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because it all just comes together. Yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't refute itself. Yeah. It, it solidifies it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and we've studied that with. You know, Christ coming, his baptism, and all that, you know, throughout Daniel and the, the prophecy of, of the Messiah and everything. So, yeah. Well, hmm. from the chosen, we know how many laws they had. A lot. They had 613 laws. 613 <laughs> laws. Are you keeping them? No. <laughs> Did you cut your hair? You put makeup on? <laughs> I have. But. Did yeah. you? No. <laughs> no. I'm supposed to not catch a beard, but I can't hardly grow one, so it didn't really matter. you got to watch the poly cotton blend, too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, that, that is kind of funny. I mean, uh, like you just saying that, is that adding to? Hmm? Where, I mean, is, is, is that adding to the Bible, you know? that? What about short skirts? Or you got to wear, you know... Uh, uh, what's the little thing in your hair the women wear? Um, all they they called it mixed fabrics in the Old Testament. Is that what it is? Yeah, it would be okay. a simple type of fabric. So if it's all cotton or all, 
it, it was, you don't want two different types, like a silk and a cotton or a silk and a Well, oil. thank goodness for the salvation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and now we're polyester and cotton. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this one. I, I mentioned a beard. Um, I seen a pastor on a little video, and I mean, he was very intense. And he literally said, if you do not shave and come up here and speak or teach, then you are going there. You have to have a smooth face to do this. Now, is that adding to? Yes. They said that more than once. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. This was just a little snippet. This was a little snippet of a video. And I was like, I was like what are you talking about? Are you kidding me? Well, you listen to that more than once. You no, I didn't listen to him more than once. <laughs> once. Once was enough, yeah. Well, there's churches that you have to wear a dress, a woman. And a woman has to wear a hat. And I'm like, God didn't come to save me for my clothes. Or my hat, or my hair. He came to save me for what's in here. I mean, I can understand modest yeah, dressing. And that's fine. That's, that, that's fine. But, I mean... Um, you know, and I, I think we should do that. But is it, you know, mandatory that, you know, yeah. you do that? I don't think so. I think you have a desire to do that once you become saved. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, if you only wore pants, as long as they were nice and, you know, I think that's each person's own self. Because, yeah. I mean, to me, wearing a hat, my hat would probably be blocking somebody else's view. You know, try to look over my hat. <laughs> well, I, we have to be careful that, that we don't put those things in place of what we're really supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's and that I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are we, you know, adding those things? Not we, but I mean, is some of the church or whatever adding those things to their? They're putting a worldly interpretation on heavenly words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So. But the old. The old rules, the old commandments, when Jesus came, he done away with those, didn't he? So, I mean, if that was part of the Bible then, it wouldn't be a part of the Bible now. It's part of the Bible, but it's not part that we yeah. have to keep for yeah, salvation. Yeah, we have to keep. And, it, and it's not something that we just, I, I think, totally do away with. I think we can dress models. Yeah. There's a lot of good things in it. You know, like we uh, talked about the, uh, the Sabbaths, you know, every seven years not planting. You know, we, we figured that out, that if we don't just keep planting a field and planting a field and planting a field, that, you know, it just drains all the nutrients out of it, and then we have to, you know, put a bunch of nutrients see, back in it. If we let it rest for a, a year... A lot of us would be under law uh, coming to church. What's that? I said a lot of us would be under going against the law coming to church on the Sabbath day. Yeah. You know, you're only supposed to, what, go so far? Yeah, it's like... 1,500 steps or something like that. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, like that. yeah so. I kind of keep that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far is the recliner from there? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Rest is on the seventh day. Yeah. Everything's been taken out of us working six days. Yeah. That's so what we need to rest. Mm -hmm. Like the plant in the field. But they couldn't eat certain years. things on that day too, right? Well, there's certain things they just couldn't eat. Period. And now we can. I love bacon. <laughs> yeah. Every time we have a cook, I fry up about eight pounds of it. Or, and then everybody helps fry up eight pounds. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah. A really yeah. good job at that, though, Mike. Huh? You do a really good job. Yeah, I try. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, but I, I, I really think this is probably more. Um, you know, more you know specific things, more detrimental things than just how you wear your hair and yeah. how you dress and stuff like that. You know, someone's going around saying that you know, well, pay me a hundred thousand dollars and I'll give you a ticket to heaven, which has happened. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, this, those are those are things that you know we definitely want to stay away from. You know, if you come up here and you're not shade, not clean face, and you're going to go to hell, you know, so, yeah, that was, that was crazy, I mean, I'm just thinking, 
you know, don't you have any idea what you're saying? You know, I, I was just, I don't know. Some it's people. Kind of like you get into a, a cult situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that's what it is. Yeah. 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 Well, we've also studied that not all who say I am a Christian, when they get up there, you know, it's going to be I never knew you. Yeah. And we, they fall a lot of victims to it because they can talk big and make it sound like it came straight out of here. Yeah. That's why, and I just read this day before yesterday, I think, that, and, and maybe even Adam preached on it. But it's a situation of, you know, you may have a speaker bring the word to you, but you should search these scriptures out to see, even, I mean, even speakers can make mistakes. Absolutely, yeah. And, I totally agree with that. So, Go! <laughs> so we should search them out. Absolutely. And, yeah. and you know, does it stand up to the Word of God? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely believe that one 100%. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so 20, it says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I come quickly. Well, it's been 2,000 years. Hurry up. <laughs> Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Yeah, so, he's coming. He's coming quickly. We've got a job to do. You know, we definitely want to see uh, everyone say, we don't want anyone to have to go through uh, this stuff, you know. So um, I guess that concludes Revelation. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Does anybody remember when it was we started then? It was in March something of last year, I think. Something like that. That's pretty good. I mean, look how long it took us to go through Romans. <laughs> <laughs> We spent a lot of time in background. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I really wanted you guys to get a good background on what was going on. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I did out there too. If you had them outside, you're lucky you got them in because yeah. I know Amanda's girl, she'll go hide if she thinks she has to go home. I caught him. I to put him inside. Mine are just like kicking and screaming, going out the gate. I don't want to come. Now, next week, uh, we might just go over uh, some stuff that uh, we started out with. I think I had five questions that I asked you before we ever got started. Um, we'll go over that a little bit, do a little recap on some stuff, and then after that, uh, I think we're going to go uh, to Matthew. We're going to start in the Gospels and just go through that and see how that goes. I think it'd be good. Yeah. You know, we've got, we got some new Christians here. We've got some old Christians. It's always good. Be careful now. I didn't, I didn't look at you. I was looking at Adam. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, we'll just do a little recap on... Uh, Revelations and uh, or end times eschatology, as the scholars want to call it. You know, but um, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I can tell you attendance will be down next Wednesday when you throw in a pop quiz. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gonna miss now, Mark. <laughs> oh no, it's it's been. Good time. So, uh, finished up for every life. I've been going for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jesus is coming back. Yeah. That's the main thing right there. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like Mike Shirk says, I read the last chapter. I know that God wins. Yep. God is going to win in the end. Yes. Uh, anybody got anything to add? 
I, I no, kind of, I, we've learned not to add or take away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, you don't want to add or take away. So, no, announcements I pretty much done with her, Lynn. Uh, Lynn will, Sunday morning, I guess we'll try to have that list together for, you know, it is just a basic thing. Mr. Paul will probably make biscuits, I imagine. Oh, I see. He enjoyed uh, doing that, so. Uh, yeah, bacon sausage. And this is the men. Yes. Females. No females are allowed to. No females are not in our kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Can't come in the kitchen. It's for Mother's Day, and we've done that the past two years, and we try to do it all. Now, we did recruit Sarah to make gravy, so. So you don't want me to bring any fried apples or me no. to bring any casserole? No. no. Okay. Well, we wouldn't complain. <laughs> but, guys, just a heads up, we will meet about 8 o'clock that morning. That gives us two hours to prep, so. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it gives us two hours to pray. Please, guys, make the food. We usually do that after we do that. Yeah, the weather is pretty when we can get outside. We're to outside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to try to do it like we did out Teddy's with the grills things. That was a little less mess and didn't stink the church. Up, so. uh, yeah, that, that's the biggest thing to play. Remember, nursing home visits canceled. Um, you got VBS meeting uh, this Sunday night. Um, and we'll let the, that'll just kind of roll in there sometime. Or VBS is getting close June 17th through 21st. What is a normal 11 a.m. service? Because I don't think we have those. Well, huh? they're not normal at all, are they? <laughs> 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 That's fair. That's fair. That's question um, Yeah. Of course you. I won't hold you up no more, guys. Kids, if we can get them out of there up front. Yeah, I'd invite somebody to come to church with you Sunday morning. I want to see where uh, Teddy's got to set some chairs up over there or something. Y'all only got to get me about 10 or 15 more and I can put Teddy in and work. So. <laughs> All right, kids, we're ready. <laughs>